somebody tell Clubhouse I'll never be defeated. Huh? I meant to tell y'all that. Make sure y'all tell him that. Slap three people say that man will never be defeated. I thought I'd tell y'all that. <laughs> now, if y'all think these men are done fighting, you can think again, honey child, because they ain't done. <laughs> Hi there. I'm Professor Blackmore and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm reporting to you again from inside of the boxing ring for another heavyweight boxing match between Bishop Senegal and Prophet Karn. And this time we have left the church house and we're taking it to the clubhouse. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. We're going to the clubhouse. And now, when I first ran across this clip from Brian Carnes' January 15th church service, I could not put the pieces together at that time because y'all know this mess between these two so-called preachers has gotten out of hand. And it's hard to follow all of the riffraff that's coming out of this mess. <laughs> Which results, as you know, from Bishop Senegal filing a lawsuit against Brian Karn alleging damages from Brian Karn allegedly sleeping with his wife. And I've outlined all of this mess, including all of the pending court documents in prior episodes of this series. So please watch my prior videos at the end of this video. Don't go over there, just hold on. <laughs> Stay and watch this video to the end and then go and review my prior videos. Now, at the beginning of this video, you heard Brian Karn say, quote, somebody tell Clubhouse I'll never be defeated. <laughs> now, when he was in the process of doing the most, I knew it had to have something to do with Bishop Senegal, but I just didn't feel like I had enough to go on. So I left it alone because by and by, we'll just understand it better by and by. Somehow or another, all of the pieces fit together in the fullness of time in the professorblackmore.com courtroom, honey child. <laughs> and that's when I ran across this conversation that it seems was set up by Bishop Senegal on Clubhouse. Okay, so let me step back a few steps and lay the foundation for all of this. So it seems that Bishop Senegal has set up some sort of organization to speak to an issue that y'all know is near and dear to my heart. <laughs> and that is the issue of pulpit pedophiles and church house child molesters. And I had no clue that Bishop Senegal had this organization, but it's called Safe House Unmuzzled. And on this Safe House Unmuzzled, Bishop Senegal and others connected to this organization are calling out pastors who are conducting all kinds of inappropriate sexual activities in the church, i.e. child molestation, rape, etc. And so on January the 5th, Safe House Unmuzzled conducted a presentation that was entitled Former Brian Karn Member Speaks Out. Now, Bishop Senegal recused himself from moderating the call until he popped back in at the end, but, <laughs> but he recused himself from moderating the call. And so the call was moderated by other individuals in the organization. And so let's get a bit of flavor from that part of the call where Bishop Senegal so-called recused himself. <laughs> Hey, grace and peace, everybody. The Lord bless you all. If everybody would, as you're coming in, hit the um, share button and uh, ping your followers in tonight. We have not been on Clubhouse for quite some time. Uh, one of the things that I want to, um, everybody to really grasp about the work that safe house does beyond these clubhouse conversations this clubhouse is just a, a a space that we have created and that we curate online as a safe space for victims and survivors of gross clergy abuse 
and predatory clergy sexual misconduct, uh, especially within the African American church context, to have a space to come and share, uh, to have a space to come and to be supported, to have a space uh, where they're not having to prove themselves. Um, and those of you all that would be in tonight, if you are uh, in with that type of mentality, this isn't the space uh, for that. Uh, in this space, we are committed to uh, supporting those who are demonstrating the courage to take voice and to give voice to what they have seen and what they have experienced. Uh, I'm going to share just a bit before uh, we bring our guest up. And once the guest comes up, I'm actually uh, not going to be um, leading or conducting this interview and conversation tonight. And uh, the reason that I'm not going to is because Brian Karn uh, is the subject matter and I am presently uh, involved in litigation against Brian Karn in Superior Court in, uh, in Mecklenburg County. And uh, as a consequence, <clears throat> I am deliberate to ensure that no false narrative can be created that um, we are manufacturing or leading anybody into saying anything. And I just don't want to make my attorney's job any more difficult than it needs to be. And so as a matter of my own integrity, um, I spoke to some of the other moderators and um, told them I'm going to recuse myself and uh, allow them to um, move forward with it. Um, the woman that will speak tonight reached out to us and um, we're going to support her and give her space. She asked to come on to uh, Safe Houses Clubhouse tonight. And uh, one of the things that I will not do is allow um, what is going on with me personally and individually in a court of law to uh, cheat others out of the space that this clubhouse um, is deliberately um, set up uh, to be. And, uh, and so uh, I'm going to, in just a moment, uh, move myself off of, of the stage and um, allow, uh, allow uh, the other moderators to, to moderate. Uh, again, those of you that will um, be in tonight, if you're in the chat, with mess this is not that type of space all right elder i'm getting ready to get off the stage Bree, and um y'all y'all put me put me off the stage and put me in the audience and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it to now, you now after listening to the very lengthy call it really was more than one member and the call was over two hours long if you can believe that and it seemed like it centered around various people in the church, actually women who are concerned mothers at that time, who complained to the church leadership about an incident or incidents involving cell phone communications, including text messages between male church leadership and then at that particular time, underage young girl in the church. Now, I'm gonna let the call speak for itself regarding who they claim was communicating with the child because I have no way of knowing if any of this is true. But the young lady who spoke out identified herself by the name of Trelawney Davis. And she claimed that she was a former member of one of Brian Carnes' church locations in Jacksonville, Florida. But before she gets to that part of the clubhouse call about the incident with the minor child, which was relayed to Miss Trelawney Davis by another mother by the name of Miss Tina, Miss Trelawney Davis had to stop and speak out about another incident that happened when she first joined the church. And so, let's listen to that part of the call. The title of this room is Surviving Hashtag KCC. Brian Karn member speaks out. So we're going to allow that speaking out. And once again, as the room title says, this is for speaking out. Nobody's going to be allowed to cross-examine in this room. 
This room is for her to uh, speak her truth, uh, for her to speak about what has happened. And we are going to allow people to comment on that uh, and to uh, add to the discussion. So right now we're going to yield the floor to Sister Davis and uh, Sister Davis is going to tell and speak out. So go right ahead, Sister Dave. Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, grace and peace. Uh, first of all, I want to just thank Bishop for allowing me um, the opportunity to speak to everybody. Uh, my name is Trelawney Davis. Um, but I just, before I start speaking, I just wanted to um, let all of the people know whoever, women and men, because it's not just women who go through trauma in the church um, and who witness things in the church that is unorthodox and is not of God. But we are manipulated to believe that if we speak out that we are in error or, you know, God is not pleased or we're not leaving it in the hands of the Lord. And I just want to let you know that it, the devil is a liar. That is not true. And I thank God for Bishop Senegal because he's given a space to people like us so we can speak out. And so somebody else will feel brave enough to speak out too. Or maybe just by speaking out, what we say will help them to understand that that kind of treatment is not okay. Being being manipulated, being abused, seeing pedophilia in the church, witchcraft, anything demonic, lies, preaching one thing in the pulpit, but living another, you know, sleeping with multiple women in the church, um, all kind of foolishness. None of that is of God and none of it is OK. So let's move on. So initially I joined um, again in August of 2020. And I visited the church. Let me tell you what led me to that church. First of all, the reason I felt safe to join that church, because we all are very, very familiar with the, the, the rumors and the past of Brian Kahn. We're not going to call him prophet. We're calling him Brian Kahn because that's what we're addressing. The man. Amen. So, <laughs> so, you know, moving on. Um, we I, I joined that church because I followed Bishop Senegal for a long time, known of his works, known of his his ministry for many, many years. And I've never had any problems with his ministry, never had any heard any dirt on his name. I never have. I'm not sure if anyone else have, but I never had. Um, and so when Bishop put his Bishop Senegal put his stamp on Prophet Khan on Bishop, on Brian Conn, I felt like, okay, well, it's safe to go there because maybe the past is in the past because we're all ex-somethings, right? All of us have a past. None of us are with or without sin. We all have done and fallen short of the glory of God, which is why we need the Lord, right? So I'm like, okay, well, maybe the stuff that, you know, Brian Conn did is in the past. Let's, let's go ahead and check this out. And this was in the middle of covid I was like, Lord, I just need to be in the house. I was coming out of a divorce. I was married to a bishop. And, you know, it was just a lot of things that I was carrying spiritually. And I, I needed I needed deliverance. I needed healing. I just I just needed to be in the house. I, I love to fellowship with with, you know, sisters and brothers of, of Christ. And I love to be, you know, somewhere where I can have the word delivered to me. And I was like, it's a prophetic ministry. Oh, I'm going to get deliverance. Right. So I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, I'm safe here. That's what I believed. One moment, y'all. I believe that was safe. So I'm going with you go. I believe that was safe. So I'm, I go to the church. I visited a couple times and you know, I didn't notice anything strange from the times that I visited. And I said, well, Lord, is this where you would have me to be? And remember, I'm broken. I just want to be in the house. 
and I'm vulnerable. Okay. I want you to follow me. Vulnerability. One of the main things manipulators and pre predators look for. All right. So I'm sitting there. I came there a couple months and then I joined because I love the, I love the, the praise team. I love the singing. I love the music. I love that prophet Khan was singing and he was seemed like he was, you know, operating in the Holy ghost. Follow me. And I'm like, yes, this is, I need to be here full of the anointing. Right. Okay. So I joined, um, and that Sunday, the minister of music, pastor Bryant, Ronnie Bryant is his name came up to me and he said, Hey sister, how you doing? God bless you. More grace. That's the slogan. More grace. I said, okay. I wasn't used to saying more grace. I said, yes. Okay. God bless you. Was my response to him. And he said, well, the Lord told me you're going to be our primary and premier praise and worship leader. I said, the Lord told you that. And he said, yes, he spoke to me just as clear as I'm talking to you. And when you joined, he said to come to you and talk to you because you're going to be the leader. I said, OK. I said, but how do you know I can sing? He, I said, I could sound like a chicken. And you telling me the Lord told you that I'm going to lead. I'm going to lead your praise and worship. He said, yeah, I need to talk to you about it um, more over the phone. Can I have your number? I looked him up and down. He seemed like a harmless older man. So I gave him my number. So later, later that night, my son then was, I'm going to say two going on three. Um, he's four now. And I was, he was in his playpen and I was winding down, you know, everybody takes a church, church nap. So I just, I just woken up from a church nap on Sunday. Here comes Pastor Bryant calling me. Pastor Bryant again is the minister of music and one of the care pastors of KCC. Kingdom City Church in Jacksonville, to be exact. So I'm like, OK, he calls me. Oh, more grace, sister. I'm like, OK, more grace. But I was trying to figure out why he called me on FaceTime. And I think it was about nine o'clock. So I'm like, OK, check inappropriate. But I, I kept talking to him. So he was like, yeah, I just want to reach out. And I'm just so glad you joined the ministry, yada, yada, yada. And then. All of a sudden he starts saying, but I have something else that I'm, that I want to talk to you about that I'm interested in. And I said, oh, really? And he said, yeah, I'm interested in you personally. I said, um, huh? Mind you, this is a married man. I'm like, OK, but you don't know me and I'm, I'm not there for that. I don't lay where I pray. That's not that's not how I move. I'm there for the word of God. I'm there for fellowship and worship. I'm not there to make a love connection. I do apologize, but that is not why I'm there. He went on to say, well, you're a single woman. How do you please yourself? What do you do? It, you know, other things took place before that, but I'm getting to the point because we, we don't need to be here all night. And um, he said, well, you know, I touch on myself and I feel like doing it right now. And I politely ended the call. That was my first encounter at KCC, the Brian Carnes church. And you know, there were others with pastor Bryant and it was never addressed properly. It was, there was never anything on my behalf. There was never anything done. And I had an issue with that. That was my welcoming. <laughs> that was my welcoming party until the foolishness that I encountered being in that ministry. Oh. <laughs> okay, now that's a lot, y'all. And again, I have no way of knowing if any of this is true. But let me know what you think about this part of the call, what I will call clubhouse call allegation number one. And if you believe there's any truth to the clubhouse call allegation number one, please let me know by leaving your comments in the comments section below. And even if you don't believe that there's any truth to it, please also leave your comments down in the comments section because I'm going to move on to what I will identify as clubhouse call allegation number two. And now this is the other parent in the church who brought this information to the attention of the first lady who was testifying Miss Trelawney Davis. And so this lady's name is Miss Tina. And so let's listen to Clubhouse call allegation number two provided by Miss Tina about the minor child. Moving on. 
So there were a lot of different situations and a lot of things that I started hearing, right, about what was happening in the church that I had now attached myself to both spiritually, emotionally and mentally. OK, because when you get into a ministry, it is just not. You're just not there spiritually. You are connected. That is your family. And so whatever is on the head of that ministry is going to trickle right down on you. So, OK, so to my knowledge, from my understanding, the head, Brian Kahn, was dealing with some stuff that started coming on my doorstep. And I'm like, OK, well, I don't know how true any of this is, but all right, I'm going to put it in the back of my subconscious and I'm going to keep it moving because, you know, people do talk. Uh, sure enough. It came to the forefront that there was a young lady, a minor, a minor girl um, who he was messing with. I'm not going to name her name because she's not on here and I don't want to do that. We'll just say she's a minor child um, at the time he was messing with her. Miss Davis, let me ask you a question. So yes. the recording, the recording that you sent um, mm -hmm. to us is is those recordings. Are those recordings concerning the minor child? Yes. Just to be clear. Okay. 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 Yes. Yes. Those are the con those are the recordings concerning her. And someone shared them with me. I won't say their name because they haven't given me permission to do that. But she was concerned because it came through her daughter. So she confronted the powers that be about this situation because she's a mother as well. I'm a mother. I have two children. And so no mother in their right mind is going to sit, sit around and, that, and be OK with that unless there's something wrong with them psychologically. So that came across my doorstep. So I'm like, now, Lord, I need you to I need you to be a fence all around me every day. I know that sounds funny and it's cliche, but really, that, I mean, I was like, what in the world have I gotten myself into? <laughs> so we move a little further. Then I started hearing about orgies and you know, him sleeping with multiple women in the church and men, too. I'm like, well, Father God, what is happening here? <laughs> Wait a minute. You're taking it too fast. Woman. Okay. okay. I'm going to play a little bit of it. And then I'm going to let Miss Tina talk about it. Because like I said, she was um, she was okay. the one made aware of, you know, everything that's going on with, with the minor and things like that. Okay. So okay, me, she, she, I'm going to go to mute, but just to let you know, she, yes, that's my friend and she shared it with me. So I'm going to go to mute now. <laughs> okay. 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 No worries. Okay. Okay. Is okay. this, is this particular, is this, okay. So when this happened, she was minor. Is she still a minor? I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I think, I think she might be 18 now. Um, that happened two years ago. So I think she's either 17 or 18 now, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, um, Brie. Yes. I don't think you should play it. Don't okay. play that part because we're not for sure. Yeah. Well, I can't, well, if that's the case, I can't play any of these recordings because I don't want to just to cover us and cover mm -hmm. you as well. I don't want to. I don't want to play a minor because if it was my child, I would feel a certain type of way. So uh, Miss Tina can come up and just talk about it because she is the one um, on the recordings and she is the one, you know, her daughter was affected by this. Right. Um, but I'm just, I don't, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I yeah. Wanna... The minor's name cannot be mentioned at all. Uh, so, so we, so we need to skip around that, even if that means that we can't. Uh, play the recordings even though we would like to but we can't do that but we can talk about the contents of the recording the people who have witnessed the recording or uh, are on the recording well I okay, will say I, I this. Saw, okay, I can Ms. Tina. it okay. now okay miss Tina how you doing miss Tina grace and peace I'm good how are you I'm wonderful let me say this real quick mm -hmm. um I know there's a lot of people in here listening to this um you know Bishop is the spearhead of of safe house um however i would not get on here and say these things i don't have like if if it wasn't true i have listened to oh, these recordings over and over and over again to make mm -hmm. sure and i have asked questions i've been asking questions all day mm -hmm. to make sure that what i'm saying is correct it these recordings are most definitely of a minor child telling another minor child what her 
and 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 Brian Carnes had going on and how it made her feel. I would not lie to anyone just to say, this is not allegedly this is exactly what happened. Some of the people that were on the recordings that were calling and being um talked to about it, they were defending it. Um they were making it seem like this minor child was not telling the truth. However, I heard all of it and this is not a lie. Go ahead, Miss Tina. Okay, so the they were minors at the time. They're no longer minors now. So is that an issue? No. So can the names not be mentioned? So I can't if if I mean if they're not minors now. They're not minors now. My daughter, she'll be 20 in a few days. The young lady, she's over the age of 18. Now, when it happened, when it transpired, they were minors. Okay. So, you tell me what, what you want to do. I mean, because it's, it's your daughter. I mean, it's, it's, and it's, it's up to you guys because I, I mean, I was, I recorded them. Okay. And I'm, I'm a, not going I'm to. Let, I'm going to let you speak. And then I, but I, I know, I, I know you're going to let me speak, but in all due respect to Bishop and this is his platform, I want to be directed. You know? Yeah, go ahead and speak. Yeah. Yeah. If they're not currently minors. No, they're not. not they're not currently minors now. Okay. 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 Well, then that's a, well, then that, that's, a, that's, we, a, we also have to remember that Bishop removed himself from the platform so we could okay. yeah yeah so we have to, we okay. have to keep that in yeah. mind yeah so well. we have we okay. have to conduct so just go right ahead and and, and uh, share then i was i was unaware of that particular nuance go ahead and share okay so this was a few years ago this was in 2020 when i joined um kcc new member don't know anything you know my my parents have been going to that church for maybe four years at the time and my dad um um was out sick experienced the illness he was out sick so i end up you know everything was shut down that was the only church that was open so i went you know i actually listened to him but my first um viewing of him seeing him with my parents when my mom was looking uh, you know listening to one of his messages his sermons on tv you know, I just told her, you know, straight up, he looked gay, you know, and that was my response. And it's just honest, you know, so um, I listened to him myself and I listened to old messages, you know, and it's just me being honest all around the table. You know, I felt as though, you know, he has an, an uh, you know, a calling on his life. So, you know, I experienced it, you know, let me go. And he's the only one that's open, you know, he's, you know, doing his faith, pushing his faith, you know, so. I went and I um, became a member. Um, I'm born and raised up in the church, came from uh, from Philippian Community Church. So this was nothing new. You know, I, I was raised to you always have respect for, you know, um, pastors, bishops, anybody, you know, in the church. I didn't, I don't, I'm not used to dealing with as much as I've dealt with at KCC. So I've joined... Um, I became an usher and of course I would hear, you know, him make, and I'm saying, um, 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 I guess Brian Carn, he'll make, you know, is she ready, you know, to, to usher and I'm like, what do you do, you know, by love and kindness, you know, and that's just me being genuine and, you know, the pureness of, of my heart. So I usher and um really didn't know anybody mind you this i was probably in for a good month didn't know anybody okay go get it baby didn't know anybody you know i speak to everybody that's just me so my um uh, there was a um something i'm on the phone okay go get it okay um so there was a outing that they had an event that they had at a, at a park and my you know my daughter was talking to um the young lady her name was Alyssa. she's uh, no longer a minor but she was a minor at the time um actually two years younger than my daughter 
and um they wanted to you know she she's normally with me you know at church and we and we leave don't know them but she wanted to go over there and um they actually you know to spend the night in in my mind being naive i'm thinking you know my first thought was to say no you know i don't know them you know but my daughter's old enough to tell me you know if anything was going to transpire i know the mom you know know her as far as and speaking that she's on the usher board with me was was on the usher, usher board with me at the time so and i know um the husband he's a uh i'm a bearer for profit so i'm like okay you know not thinking that anything my daughter's gonna come back with anything in that nature so the very next day i'm on the phone okay the very next um day or a few days well it was the very next day because sunday um it was actually sunday i want to say when she came home and she said mom i got something to tell you but it um it made me look made me look at um uh, profit in a different manner so i'm sitting and i'm washing dishes i just remember like it was yesterday and she says um Alyssa told her and showed her text messages of prophet brian Karn texting her saying that he can run circles around her and these little boys and in my mind i'm like you know just observing you know kids and my my first thought was saying that she's lying and that's what i said don't don't believe her you know because she looked like she fast you know she you know that man ain't stunting her you know but she said he showed she showed her um text messages and i say okay well what did she did she tell her mom and she said yeah she told her mom her mom told her um just to tell him to stop um text messaging her and also ask her do you want me to say something to which is the mom's husband do you want me to say have her have him say something to him and from my understanding you know I guess um, she said no, and that was that. So, you know, I said, I'm gonna call her mom and let her know what she's saying. My daughter said, no, don't do that, mom, you know, and me being a mother, me being me, I ain't, I ain't paying no, you know, paying you no mind, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call, you know, but I tried to, you know, gain my daughter's trust. So I said, okay, you know, she said, don't, oh, you know, they handle it handled it I'm not going to worry about it you know so left it alone and as church went on I'm noticing what the little girl was saying that when you know she's out in the um congregation he hugs her around her neck but when they're back in the office he hugs her around her waist it you know it's multiple things that my daughter was telling me and i'm like okay so he ended up saying something um across the pulpit because he's known to talk across the pulpit so he said something across the pulpit and i'm watching him text the little girl in my mind mind don't know for sure but they were texting back and forth and i told my daughter i said don't worry about it i'm going to tell her mother you know i'm going to tell her mother you know exactly what was said to me what was told to me so as i'm leaving out of church because i can't remember what he said but what he said it made me upset so i'm leaving out of church and i i, I stepped to her mom and i said hey um call me later when you get a chance um so i can tell you do you know what your daughter's saying about profit and she looked and she said no and i said okay well call me later so when she called me initially, I spoke with Trelawney about it. I told Trelawney what, you know, what was said. And I said, I'm going to record. I'm going to record her. And um, I got my daughter in the car with me. And I said, now, uh, Kiana, tell me the truth. Kiana's my daughter. Tell me the truth. You know, don't sit up here and say, because you know what you're telling me. That's a, a that's a big thing, especially when you're saying something about a man of God. And she was like, what I got to lie for? 
you know, I don't, I don't have no reason why. So I talked to her mom and her mom was saying, you know, your daughter actually used my daughter's phone. She went through her text messages and that's how she saw the messages. And I said, okay, well, what you're telling me is the overall thing is there are text messages because they, they were trying to deny, you know, what um, I said was to be true. And I said, so what you're telling me is that there are text messages of this man saying that he can run circles around your daughter. What does he mean? He can run circles around her. She, she a child. What you're grown behind saying you can run circles around a child behind a little boy. So to, all, to, all together for me, you know, it was a no. You know, I'm like, okay, he, he a little suspect. So um, that conversation took place. And... Um, I think we went out of town and I, I literally wasn't going to go back because all of that, I, I, I don't do foolishness in the church. You know, I went, I didn't grow up with any of this and you, you heard about little stuff, but not when it come down to your head, you know, people can play church all day, but I don't play church. So, um, that took place and I think. At uh, Sister Makisha, which is um, the the little girl, uh, Alyssa's mom, called me, and that's what she we we, we discussed about the uh, the messages um, that my daughter went in her phone, the daughter phone, and saw the messages. And um, <laughs> okay, now that that that's a lot too. <laughs> and again, I'll say I have no way of knowing if any of this is true. But let me know what you think about the veracity of Clubhouse call allegation number two about the minor child who is now an adult. So if you believe that there's any truth to Clubhouse call allegation number two, or even if you think it is not true, please let me know by leaving your comments in the comment section below. And now this has laid the proper foundation and now we can review Brian Carnes' full response to these allegations provided by these concerned parents in the clubhouse call who were then members of Brian Carnes Church in Jacksonville, Florida. And so you want to keep in mind that this response is not only to Bishop Senegal, but also to these prior members. And so let's check it out. Somebody tell clubhouse, I'll never be defeated. <laughs> I meant to tell y'all that. Make sure y'all tell him that. Slap three people, say that man will never be defeated. I thought I'd tell y'all that. I hope you're watching. I, ha, 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 I'll never be defeated. Y'all better do better than that. You're blessed. I ain't scared. You blessed. I said, I ain't scared. I'll be here. Just keep watching. You blessed. I know it bothers you that I won't die. But slap three people say, I ain't going nowhere. Tell somebody, you can't kill me. You blessed. And if you don't believe me, the last witch who tried to kill me. You blessed. If you trying to take me out, ask the last scandal. God is for me. Hold up. Oh yes he is. The Lord on my side. He don't need your approval. You blessed. I got to bless him. <laughs> Slap three more people say I ain't going nowhere. You're blessed. Pastor, you all right? Of course I am. You worry? Not at all. Fret not thyself. 
Just had to throw that out there. Now, as I have told y'all before, Brian Karn is messy, messy, messy. <laughs> and I just want to tell you, Bishop Senegal, I hope your attorneys have brought in the insurance company from the insurance that Brian Karn must have had on that church. Because if you take this to a jury trial and you win your case and you get a judgment and he claims that he can't pay the judgment, I just want to let you know, Bishop Senegal, that while you can garnish a bank account, you can't garnish a pocket, boo. <laughs> you can't go up in there and garnish somebody's pocket. <laughs> because all of that money is going straight into Brian Karn's pocket. <laughs> and that is why I strongly advise you to settle this mess and get a cashier's check when you do. <laughs> and make sure you have brought in the insurance company. And if they want to issue Brian Karn a reservation of rights and deny coverage, that's their business. But you need to make sure that you make the claim, in my opinion. And that's some free advice coming from an insurance defense attorney. You're welcome, okay? <laughs> but as y'all know on here, I just ask and report and I let the saints decide. So what do you think about this clubhouse match of this pool pit powwow episode. I mean, I'll put a link in the description section below so that you can listen to the entire clubhouse call. But it got a little hidden when people in the chat start asking why Miss Davis and Miss Tina did not report the incident when the child was still a minor. And so if you remember, Miss Tina said that she went to the parents of the child of whom the father was allegedly one of Brian Karn's armor bearers. And there you know, with them arm, the armor bearers, they protect a whole lot of things, don't they? <laughs> and the parents did not report it. So do you believe that Miss Tina and or Miss Davis should have reported it to law enforcement? Please. Let me know by leaving your comments in the comment section below. And I hope you'll also give me a big thumbs up. And I hope you'll also consider donating to this video and my entire channel ministry by clicking the super thanks heart button below. And while you're there, I want to also ask that you please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell so you'll be notified whenever I come back with more hot tea on this case. And please also follow me on TikTok and Instagram.